Hey YouTube, Bossy here, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about my choice for my big three of gear for my Appalachian Trail through hike in 2019. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be running through my big three gear items for my Appalachian Trail through hike. Uh, next year in 2019. Um, gear is one of the most fought over and debated topic in all of hiking and backpacking and through hiking especially. Um, mostly because there's so much out there. And who's to say what's right and what's wrong and whether you're throwing a stack on a stick over your shoulder or you're carrying monster like uh, Cheryl Strayed in Wild, um, who's to say who's right and who's wrong? The answer, the simple answer at least, is everybody is right and nobody is wrong. Um, on the trail we have a thing called Hike Your Own Hike, so um, it's really kind of prevents people from judging others for how they choose to do their hike because it's an individual journey for all of us. Um, that being said, uh, a lot of people nowadays really try to go more lightweight because you're hiking 2,100 miles. There's, there's only so much your body can take what, before it decides it no longer wants to carry 30 pounds on its back for another mile. Um, so nowadays gear companies really are cracking down on making the lightest, best gear possible and um, it is a minefield trying to navigate what is best for you and your specific trip. That being said, um, as a seasoned backpacker, I've kind of played around with a lot of different options and have had lots of different gear in my hiking career. Um, so I really feel I have the best gear for myself and I know how it works, how it, um, how it interacts with the environments and the, d the different um, weather issues that I have with it. I know how my body works. So um, after experience and uh, playing around with a lot of different things over many, many years, I've narrowed it down to um, a couple of things. So first up, um, the most important thing on the trail uh, is your backpack. Um, it's what you carry in your back, it's what you put all of your gear in, it's literally your home, um, your closet, your pantry, your kitchen, it is everything. And uh, if it's not comfortable, it is not going to last you 21, 2200 miles without exception. So um, I've had this backpack for a couple of years now. I did the Wonderland Trail with it and um, a lot of overnights and things like that and it works perfectly for me. It is comfortable. I've never had any rubbing in the shoulders or the, the hip band. Um, so it's worked out great for me. But it is the Osprey Exos. 48. Um, they've been making this pack for a number of years and recently within the last couple it's become um, not only one of the best uh, framed packs, lightweight packs in manufacturing uh, as being manufactured today, um, but it's also one of the most popular packs on long trails. To date um, and for good reason it's it weighs uh, two pounds and eight ounces um, it has really good padding and the hip belt and the shoulders really good ventilation as you can see it has what's called an airstream um, support and back brace so it's kind of this trampoline um, thing it does squeak a little bit but you know what it's nothing headphones can't cure because it's comfortable and it ventilates fantastic. I've never had an issue with sweating because of my backpack and I've had that with many before uh, and it's not pleasant. Um, so this is a single compartment pack 
It does not have a sleeping bag compartment um, like some other uh, brands and some other Osprey packs. Uh, it is one large compartment that I will be lining with a compactor or contractor bag. Compactor bag? I forget what they're called. The heavy walled lined um, trash bags. Uh, instead of using a um, pack cover, with pack covers, your stuff gets wet anyway. It does not fully, it you know, it ends here at the straps. It does not keep anything from getting wet elsewhere, or elsewhere. Um, as well as when you have your rain jacket on, like that's gonna slide down your rain jacket and onto your pack anyway. Um, and you know, keeping my clothes and my sleeping bag dry is crucial. So my pack can be wet. I don't mind as long as the stuff that needs to stay warm uh, and dry does and those kind of trash bags work fantastic so that'll be lined inside the pack um, it has two stretchy side pockets on each side as well as a stretchy mesh front pocket here um, I've already had a, I'm pretty sure a trekking pole went through here I forget what happened there I had duct taped it for a while but it's not really important, that's usually where one of my water bottles go, so it's not about to fall out anytime soon, so I'm not super worried. Um, it also comes with two hip belt pockets, which unfortunately do not fit my phone, which is a bummer, um, but they fit snacks just good, or just well. Um, there are also uh, shoulder strap pockets for, you know, a cliff bar or a pack of gummies or a candy bar or something like that um, <clears throat> but as you can see it is a little bit dirty a little bit roughed up it's well been well used I love this pack that's the backpack um, the second piece of gear I'm gonna show you for my big three is my tent my home away from home um, so this is my tent. This is a Big Agnes Fly Creek One. It is a one person tent. It is very small. Um, I am not claustrophobic, which is fantastic. I know some people really don't like the confinement and whatnot and they get anxiety about it. I am not one of those people, which is a good thing for me um, because I was lucky enough to find this at a garage sale for <clears throat> a fraction of what the retail price is. So this tent is technically described as a freestanding tent. It is not, however, it needs to be staked out. So that's quite unfortunate and not super accommodating, um, but you can't beat it on weight. This tent is two pounds and one ounce with the footprint and the stakes. You can't beat that. So I have a pouch over here, which um, I use for my headlamp and my phone and my glasses and that's really the only things that I keep out at night when I'm backpacking. Um, it does have a front entrance which is a, a bit annoying sometimes um, just because it doesn't allow you a lot of space to kind of come in and out um, but it does the rainfly does have a vestibule um, that does cover my entire pack so in case it's pouring raining and I don't want to take my wet pack into my tent, I can just leave it in the vestibule with my shoes um, and not have to worry about um, getting everything else wet. Next on the list is my sleep system, which is probably next to the backpack itself is the most important thing um, that a backpacker has. And that, so my main sleeping bag is this Kelty Coramel zero degree down bag. Um, I got this a couple of years ago um, and it is super warm and super amazing. Like I absolutely love the sleeping bag to death and I use it all the time. Um, it's a zero degree bag, so it is not light. Um, it is four pounds and one ounce. Um, which is on the heavy side, I understand that. Um, but it is also, thing I love, it is semi-rectangular, which 
I actually don't sleep in my sleeping bags like normal person. I prefer to unzip it um, with just a little bit left on the bottom and turn it uh, halfway so that I can use it as a quilt and then just tuck my feet in the bottom. Um, I sleep a lot better than having to fiddle with like my, because I have wider shoulders, trying to fiddle with moving around and um, I find that I'm just a lot more comfortable when I do it that way. It works perfectly for me and it keeps me super warm. I unfortunately am a very cold sleeper. Um, so a zero degree bag was something I took into account. Um, on the other hand though, I don't feel as though I'm going to be needing a zero degree bag for the entirety of my trip. Um, I'm from the East Coast, I've hiked a ton, I know the area, and I know that dead of summer, when it is 90% humidity and 90 degrees, I am not going to want to be in a zero degree bag, and it's going to be the worst. I do have another sleeping bag. I was using it to pad my backpack. Um, so... <clears throat> I have this um, Sierra Designs uh, Zizu 23 degree dry down sleeping bag. Um, and I've used this several times and I actually got it kind of as a, a hand-me-down gift from a friend who warned me that it did not stay very warm. It wasn't very warm. And he was right. Um, it's it's really light. The, pa uh, the sleeping bag comes in at only two pounds, three ounces, which is almost half of the weight of my Kelty. Um, but it is not very warm at all. Um, so even though I will be replacing my Kelty with this to save weight, um, there is a huge possibility that I will also bring along a liner. Um, that way I can just use that if I get cold. So yeah, so this will be coming with me at some point, most likely with a sleeping bag liner. So the final part of the sleep system, so you have a sleeping bag and you have a sleeping pad. Um, there are typically two types of sleeping pads. There are closed foam pads. Uh, now for the past couple years, I have been using a Thermarest Z-Lite. Um, which kind of accordion is closed. It has the silver reflective paint on the one side and um, the yellow regular color on the other side. And one of the reasons I absolutely love this pad um, is because of the reflectant on it and because I lay directly on the pad and then use my sleeping bag over top me as a quilt, um, the pad reflects my body heat directly back off of me into the sleeping bag, which then contains it inside my little cocoon, and I stay very, very warm that way. Um, that's the one reason that I absolutely love it. The other side of it, I am a side sleeper and a chest sleeper, like a stomach sleeper. Like It's sometimes miserable to get comfortable. Um, I usually have to take my backpack and like stuff it under my knees if I'm going to be laying on my back and it can be rough. So um, that is one of the downfalls. Another one of the up one, uh, the perks is that it is 14 ounces and you can put it on the bottom of your pack and take it off when you want to sit down and eat lunch on a rock and protect you from the ground, which is fantastic. So I've been contemplating actually getting an inflatable pad, and that is the other type of sleeping pad. The most common on the trail is the Thermarest Neo Air, um, which the one I am looking at is only one pound, so it's close in weight, but it has the, um, I think it's like three inches thick when inflated. And I slept on one a couple of times, and it's uh, you have the best sleep of your life out on the trail. Um, however, they are very expensive. A Nia or a Z Light only costs about sixty, seventy dollars. Um, you're gonna pay at least double that 
for a Neo Air. If I've heard so many good things about the Neo Airs, um, so that was definitely something I uh, might make a Christmas gift for myself and uh, start kind of playing around with it and figuring out what I want. Um, in addition to taking a Neo Air, I would also want to take a sit pad with me. Um, Thermo Rest makes the Z Light into a small, like four rectangle square kind of piece. Um, so that you can use it just to sit, that way I can put it down on rocks or the ground and not have to get my butt wet or dirty, um, as well as protecting myself from rocks and things like that. So those are my big three pieces of gear for the trail. Uh, the lightest my pack could ever be with those gear items that I've listed in this video could be 7 pounds, 10 ounces, just for those for those three pieces. Um, the heaviest it could be if I'm using a Neo Air and my Kelty zero degree bag would be nine pounds, 10 ounces. So there's a two pound difference, which doesn't seem like a lot. And honestly, it's gonna be a comfort thing. Um, so those are my big three gear items for my third hike uh, in 2009 on the Appalachian Trail. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you down below. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for the rest of this year series that will be coming out over the next couple months, as well as hitting that little bell so you get notifications when I post a new video. Uh, I want everyone to have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, the gorilla's loose!